In episode 7, we head back over to Italy. The coronavirus continues to rage war all over the country. And Mitch is two days away from being over with quarantine. So he tells Paula, I think I need to go home. But before I do, I need to tell you something. And she gets really excited. But the thing he has to tell her is, I need you to delete that interview. It's not that I don't trust you. It's just I need that thing gone. And she kind of gets upset because it sounds like he doesn't trust her. But he explains, I don't trust what could happen if that thing got out. I don't trust the world. She's pretty upset, but she agrees that she will delete the interview. He then gets an alert on his phone that somebody's at the front gate, so he heads out, and boy is he surprised to find Alex Levy. He explains that he's in quarantine, but she doesn't care. She's traveled all the way across the world to see him, so he lets her in, but she didn't come to visit him out of concern. The first thing she does is yell at him for telling Maggie Brenner to fuck off. You would think that would be a good thing, but what she was actually looking for was for him to tell Maggie Brenner that nothing ever happened. She explains this book coming out could be really bad for her. Mitch says no, he's not going to make a statement, and that's when Alex really goes in on him. She tells him how she walked out of the debate, and she kind of blames that on him. She tells him how she walked out of work a week and a half in, and she kind of blames that on him. She tells him, I need you to release a statement that me and you never happen. But he tells her, no, Alex, I'm done lying. And she can't believe that he's deciding now, of all times, that he's going to stop lying. He asks her, why do I have to lie? And she explains, it's because I lied. Laura Peterson asked me on national television if me and you ever had sex, and I said no. And he asked her, you really think that's going to mess up your life, just being associated with me? And she explains, yeah, I'm worried about being canceled because you got canceled. No one will respect me if I slept with you. Mitch thinks about it for a little bit and says, all right, I'll do it. But here I thought you were doing this because you wanted to protect your children. Or maybe your husband. But no, it's the mere fact that having consensual sex with me was so vile that it'll end your career. Paolo comes in and breaks up the awkward conversation. Both women kind of give Mitch the what is she doing here look, and Paolo apologizes and leaves the room. And once she does, Alex starts ripping into Mitch about how he has another woman here. Mitch explains that he hasn't had sex with her. He doesn't want to violate her like that, ruin her, and maybe a book comes out, kind of like somebody else he knows. But Alex just finds it ironic. Mitch tries to explain that Paolo's a documentarian and a really good one, but Alex really isn't buying it, and she doesn't really care. She tells Mitch, I need you to call your publicist and release a statement. Although Mitch doesn't have a publicist, he was dropped, so he's going to have to do it on his own. That, however, is not good enough for Alex. She wants it right then and there. Even though Mitch wants to actually, like, type something up, just to get her out of the house, he writes, I did not fuck Alex Levy. Best regards, Mitch. Alex yells at him for just wasting her time, and what she's worried about is Mitch not doing it. So Mitch gives her his new number and sends her on her way. But when Alex leaves, Paolo comes in and says, you can't leave this like that. So she kind of urges Mitch to go outside and sort of make amends with Alex. Luckily for Mitch, Alex is trapped on the property. She can't get out because of the gate. Alex is still pretty pissed off about just everything in general, but Mitch tells her that his relationship with her is probably the second most important relationship he has on the world, so he just wants her to leave there with an understanding of sorts. He doesn't want to spend the rest of his life hating Alex, and he doesn't want her to spend the rest of her life hating him. So, he talks, she listens, kind of. She gets tired of it pretty quickly and says, alright, I gotta go, I gotta catch a flight. The two, however, don't end on good terms. They get into a bit of a fight because Alex has no response for anything Mitch said, and Mitch asks her, were you really gonna say that I raped you? And Alex doesn't even have a response for that. Just telling him, I need you to release a statement. Mitch yells, yeah, I'll release the goddamn statement, but just so you know, I don't think what you did with me really qualifies as sex. Alex then leaves and figures out pretty quickly that getting a plane back to the U.S. is going to be a pain. The whole country's in lockdown. She's having big issues, even though she's offering a lot of money. So when she leaves Mitch's house, she heads straight for the airport, although it's quite a drive. Mitch, however, walks back into his house, where Paula walks up with her computer and wants to show him in person that she's going to delete the interview. Even though Mitch says it's not necessary to show him, he trusts her, Paula does it anyway. Paula then tells Mitch, it's time for me to go. This kind of takes Mitch off guard because he knows that Paula doesn't actually want to leave, but Paula thanks him and then heads back to her place. Right before she leaves, though, she lets Mitch know that she got a message from the professor's daughter. He passed away. She's going to send flowers to his family on their behalf. The next day, Alex Levy is woken up by a police officer. She started drifting off on the way to the airport, so she decided to pull on over to the road, just take a quick nap. That nap turned into full-on sleep. She gets woken up by an officer who's wondering what exactly she's doing in the middle of a quarantine zone, sleeping in her car. She explains that she's heading to the airport, she was visiting a friend, but he's suspicious because of the whole, you know, 
country being shut down thing. He tells her, I'm not letting you leave until you actually book a flight out of here, but her phone's dead. And the only number that she has on hand is Mitch's. So the police officer has to call Mitch, the only person in the country that she knows. And Alex Levy has to go back to Mitch's hat in hand. When she gets to his house, though, there's a note in the door that just says, come on in. And then when she gets in the living room, there's a plate of food and it says, here's breakfast for you. I'll be upstairs. I really don't want to talk to you anymore. It's too hard. I left a statement for you in the envelope. And Alex starts to break down a little bit. She drops some of the silverware on the ground. And that's when Mitch comes in and says, you know, you didn't have to fly all this way to like mess up my stuff. She starts kind of laughing, and they start cleaning it up. But Alex is not doing well. Mitch can see it all over her face. She's crying. She's kind of inconsolable. And as she's crying, she tells Mitch, I don't know who I am or what I'm supposed to be doing. And I just miss you, and gives him a hug. Once Alex calms down, Mitch is able to contact somebody and book her a flight out. She's got a flight at 6 a.m. Now they've got a few hours to kill, so they head in the house and start playing Trivial Pursuit. He asks Alex if she can help Paula because of the documentarian thing. Obviously, he doesn't really have the contacts he used to when Alex does. Alex agrees to that, by the way. They then put on some records and start dancing. And then they start talking about cancel culture and how Mitch isn't dead. Maybe his career is, but he's not. And Alex ends up dropping a bombshell on him during this dance session. She tells him that after they did what they did in Chile, a.k.a. the sex stuff, Alex thought she was pregnant. She actually wanted to have it. She was excited to have it. She loved Mitch, not as like a lover, but just as a person. She was so thrilled to make their partnership a lifelong thing. She knew it would be extremely difficult, but she would stay up at night racking her brain on thinking of how she would keep this baby. In the long run, though, wasn't meant to be. She was just late. They ended up spending the rest of the night dancing, drinking wine. But at some point in the middle of the night, they start having a conversation about how Mitch can get bitter sometimes. And that leads him to going to some pretty dark places. He lost everything he thought gave his life meaning. Because of this, he wants to make sure that she appreciates everything she has. They end up falling asleep together, but he ends up waking up in the middle of the night, heading to the bathroom, and when he wakes up, she wakes up. Mitch turns on the television and it's the news. And after the COVID-19 news, they move into the Mitch Kessler, Alex Levy news. The excerpt from Maggie's book that is to appear in Vanity Fair leaked, the one that says that Mitch Kessler targeted African-American women. And it sends Mitch into a rage. He feels like that they're just trying to dig his grave deeper and deeper. He turns to Alex and says, You don't actually think I targeted black women, do you? I mean, I'm attracted to them. But Alex is really turned off by this news and just says, "Uh, I, I gotta go, even though her plane isn't for a few hours. He once again asks her, Alex, you don't actually believe I did that, do you? And Alex says, Mitch, just because you didn't mean to do it doesn't make it okay. And Mitch just can't understand it. The fact that maybe he did something that he didn't realize he was doing at the time, he kind of has a mini breakdown. He whines to Alex, I just want to be a good person. And Alex tells him, I I know, but can't do this right now. I just, I gotta go. And Mitch says, so you come here and you get me to tell the world that you are someone you're not. So you don't get canceled like I did? And you'll never tell anybody who you think I really am? I mean, come on. Alex starts getting pretty emotional, and Mitch just goes to give her a hug. Alex does ask, can you still release the statement? And Mitch says, sure. Alex then heads off to go catch her flight. Mitch then texts Paula, okay, everything's fine now. Will you come back, please? And Paula says, do you still even want me to come? And Mitch says, actually, can I come to you? I want to be in your world for a while. So Paula says, sure. And Mitch has come over to get a second opinion on the whole targeting black women thing. But instead of giving him an answer, Paula ends up kissing him. Mitch pushes her away saying, I don't think this is a good idea. And Paula says, I know it is because of that. Mitch eventually ends up giving in. The two end up sleeping together. It seems like they both had a good time. But Paula realizes that she's out of cigarettes. Mitch offers to go get them and heads out. And on the drive, he starts going into one of those dark places he was talking about thinking about every negative thing that he's heard about himself, about how bad of a person he is. He starts drifting off kind of mentally. And as he's turning a corner, he has to swerve out of the way to avoid a car. And that's when he starts going off of a cliff. But instead of re-grabbing the wheel, he actually pulls his hands back, and he just lets the car go straight off. Thank you so much for checking out this recap. Please consider subscribing to the channel. Hit thumbs up if you liked it. Smash that thumbs down button if you thought this sucked. Make sure to be nice in the comments section. If you don't see the next video up in the end screen there, I'll get it up in a few days not to worry. And I have merchandise, you know? So go buy a mug or something. It's never too early to think about Christmas gifts, folks. Once again, thank you for checking out this recap.